The Animal Kingdom, a remarkable array of living, breathing natural wonders. Majestic, compelling, ingenious, and extraordinary. Fascinating, physical, visceral, and ferocious. Discover their past, present, and future. Just stunning. Just glorious. Just amazing. Just animals. Bears. They are some of the largest, strongest mammals roaming the planet. Young, boisterous cubs have a charming, cuddly appeal. Their lush fur and lovable antics inspiring generations of toy makers. As adults, however, bears are daunting. Their impressive size and formidable presence commands respect. In times past, some cultures feared bears to the point that it was taboo to call them by their true name, Arcto. To avoid summoning these dangerous creatures, the superstitious would use safer, descriptive terms, such as bear, an old English word meaning the brown or dark one. Antarctica and Australia are the only continents that bears don't inhabit. With such large numbers seen in other parts of the world, it may be surprising to learn that there are only eight different bear species in existence. As a group, bears are often described as dog-like. This resemblance can be seen in their muzzles. Other standard features include thick coats of fur, large paws with long claws, small round ears, plus short tails. Together, these traits combine to form one awesome beast. In biological terms, bears are many things. They are vertebrates, animals with backbones. Having a sturdy spine is one feature that puts them into the class of mammals. The fact that they're warm-blooded, have fur, and give birth to live young that nurse on milk are other specific mammalian characteristics. The next rung of the taxonomic ladder has bears placed in the carnivora order. Mammals with claws and teeth for capturing and eating prey. Not all members are pure carnivores or meat eaters. Some are omnivores, adding plant material to their diet. The caniforms are a suborder a name that means dog-like. Wolves and other canids, plus seals, otters, the red panda, and raccoons are some of the animals in this group. Bears are another. They make up the Ursidae family, this name coming from the Latin word for bear. Bears all have large, stocky bodies covered in a thick double coat of fur. A 
The short undercoat close to the skin traps in heat, while the longer guard hairs repel water. Bears have sturdy heads to match their brawny bodies, with broad skulls and large, powerful jaws. The lips on a bear have a loose, rubbery appearance, perhaps due to the fact they are not attached to their gums. Inside their mouths, bears are equipped with large canine teeth, which are more for defensive displays than dining. Flat molars crush their food. Moving down to their feet, a bear's paws have five digits with non-retractable claws, like their canine cousins. Those on the front paws are longer than the hind sets. While some large animals walk on their toes, bears get around using what's called plantigrade locomotion, with their feet landing flat on the ground. Some, like polar bears, have hairy, well-insulated soles, natural snowshoes. In contrast, species that climb tend to have naked soles for better grip. The claws on climbing bears are strong and curved, better for wrapping around tree trunks. Diggers, like grizzly bears, have long straight claws. warning is to never run from a bear. As predators, they will chase, and knowing they can hit speeds over 60 kilometers per hour, there is no point. What's more, they can charge along at these speeds going uphill, or down, or across a slope. Up in the trees, bears can be equally zippy. Intelligent, strong, daunting. Apt descriptors for these extraordinary mammals. The world's eight bear species can be found in a wide variety of habitats throughout the Northern Hemisphere and in a few regions to the south of the equator. Brown bears enjoy the widest distribution, roaming various continents in the Northern Hemisphere. The largest member of the family is the polar bear. Males, or he bears, can weigh up to half a ton. The largest ever recorded was twice that. Females, or she-bears, are roughly half the size of the males. From nose to tail, males can measure up to three meters. On all fours, they stand about a meter tall. When they rear up onto their hind legs, their immense size becomes fully apparent. Polar bears sit at the top of the food chain. They are the world's largest terrestrial carnivore. Seals are their favorite food. As their name suggests, the chilly Arctic is their domain. Polar bears equally at home on the ice as they are in the bitterly cold water. Due to their reliance on the ocean, they are the only bears considered to be marine mammals. The next largest members of the family are brown bears. There is no mistaking these mammals are bears. Their scientific name, Ursus arctos, makes sure of this. Both words mean bear from Latin and Greek respectively. 
They are a diverse group with more than 10 subspecies inhabiting regions in Europe, North America, Asia and the Middle East. Despite their name, brown bears can have a variety of coat colours, ranging from pale cream to dark brunettes. A well-known subspecies of brown bear is the grizzly from North America, named for the silvery tips on their fur, giving their coats a grizzled or streaked appearance. They can be distinguished from other brown bears thanks to a large hump on their shoulders. American black bears might be the smallest bear found on its namesake continent, but they have the greatest population numbers in the entire family. They range from Canada down to Mexico. Mature black bears can grow to a length of two meters. Compared to brown bears, they have longer ears and smaller shoulder humps. With respect to their coat color, this bear's name is misleading. They apparently come in a greater range of hues than any other North American mammal. East Coast black bears tend to be darker, while their West Coast cousins display lighter shades. The Komodi bear from islands off British Columbia in Canada is an extreme example. Also known as spirit or ghost bears, these individuals are not albinos. Like other black bears, they have dark noses and paws. The pale coat of a spirit bear is the result of recessive genes at work. If both parents have these genes, their cub develops a white coat. In this isolated population, approximately one in 10 black bears will display this rare, unusual trait. Asian black bears are easy to tell from their American relatives as they have a bright V-shaped marking on their chest. Sometimes called moon bears, these mammals are found in mountainous forest areas. Sloth bears have similar markings, plus light muzzles and bushy coats. These mammals are found in Sri Lanka and India, plus in northern regions such as Nepal and Bangladesh. Spectacled bears are the only species native to South America. These mid-sized bears are named for the white fur that surrounds their eyes. With their bold black and white fur, there's no mistaking the giant panda, an endangered species native to China. Large round heads and stocky bodies are characteristic of these beloved bears, which can grow to a shoulder height of 70 centimeters. With so few wild pandas remaining, many live in sanctuaries and zoos, safe havens to ensure their ongoing survival. The eighth member of the bear family is the sun bear, the smallest of their kind, similar in size to a large dog. Like some of its cousins, this bear has a chest patch. Theirs looks like a rising sun. At around 65 kilos, these lightweights are tree dwellers. The Malay name for these bears means he who likes to sit high. One bear-like creature that also likes to sit high is the koala. These native Australian animals are often called koala bears, yet this is a misnomer, as they are not bears. They are, in fact, marsupials. Red pandas are also not part of the bear family. Taxonomists have placed them in their own unique group.
from lush rainforests to Arctic sea ice, bears have successfully mastered an amazing range of domains. Bears are intelligent mammals, rivaling the great apes. Brains and brawn have no doubt helped these robust animals survive and flourish in such a broad range of environments around the globe. In addition, bears have a vast array of adaptations and special skills to call on to assist them in their daily lives. One of their best assets is their fur. These lush, dual-layered coats have a variety of functions. One is to keep the bear warm. Bears are further insulated by a layer of fat under their skin. On a polar bear, that layer can be 10 centimeters thick. To the eye, their dense coats appear to be white or cream but the individual strands are actually translucent. This allows sunlight to penetrate their fur and be absorbed by their black skin. A polar bear's fur demonstrates another important role played by their coat, camouflage. In their icy environment, these massive predators can blend in and sneak up on any potential meals. The striking bands on a panda are thought to be a disruptive pattern, breaking up their outline when amongst foliage, allowing them to hide in plain sight from any lurking danger. There is a theory about the chest markings on species like sun bears and sloth bears. When fighting, they could make them seem larger to their opponent. When in dense forests, American black bears are well camouflaged. Researchers believe their coats may offer them an additional, more unusual kind of protection. Dark fur is rich in a pigment known as melanin. It's been noted that black feathers in birds are scratch resistant. Some believe that black fur may have the same hardy quality. Strong claws are another vital feature. For climbing species, they can grip into tree bark. On a polar bear, they dig into the ice, providing traction. Claws can also help a hungry bear dig out a meal or hold prey. Backed up by muscular limbs and large paws, they make formidable weapons for both attack and defense purposes. The flexible front paws of a giant panda have a special additional feature, an opposable thumb-like structure. This enlarged wrist bone is useful for holding and manipulating their favorite food, bamboo. All bears can swim, but polar bears are especially strong in the water. Also known as sea bears, their forepaws are slightly webbed and work like paddles. 
The hind feet are in charge of steering. These marine mammals have been observed to swim for over 160 kilometers without resting. Polar bears' front paws make excellent snow shovels as well, perfect for carving out a den in a snowbank. Watching a bear walk, they seem to be bow-legged. This does not hinder their gait. Instead, their curved limbs give these large mammals good balance. Brown bears have a habit of standing on their hind legs to get a better view of their surroundings or to reach food. Their rear paws are larger than the front pair, giving them a sturdy, solid base. Like their canine relatives, bears are scent-oriented animals. The inner surface of their muzzle is covered with millions of olfactory nerves. Compared to a bloodhound, a bear's sense of smell is seven times greater. Their keen noses can detect food sources more than 30 kilometers away. A polar bear can smell a seal below a meter of ice. Food is not the only thing their noses can find. They can sniff out potential mates locate their cubs, and sense any approaching threats. A bear's hearing is also superior, similar to that of a dog, including a sensitivity to high-pitched noises. Asian black bears have the largest ears in the family. Compared to other carnivores, Bears have unusually shaped ear flaps. They have round cups as opposed to triangular. On every species except pandas, the ears can rotate and focus in on interesting sounds. In terms of vision, bears have good eyesight and can see in color. Their slit-shaped pupils open wide in low light, giving them excellent night vision as well. Thanks to their acute senses and clever adaptations, every bear is well equipped to tackle life's challenges. Modern bears have been around for hundreds of thousands of years. Their ancestors date back to the dinosaur age, small insect-eating mammals known as myosids. Eventually, they gave rise to carnivorans, such as bears, dogs and cats. The oldest known bear, the dawn bear, existed 20 million years ago, similar in size to a small dog. Giant pandas split away from the rest of their bear cousins about 3 million years ago. One of its earliest ancestors was the pygmy giant panda, half the size of its modern counterpart. Brown, black and polar bears are thought to have shared a common ancestor about 4 million years ago. Today, bears have many close relatives, canids as previously mentioned, plus seals or pinnipeds, and mustaloids, a broad group including red pandas, skunks, weasels, and raccoons. The close ties between bears and raccoons has not gone unnoticed. In many parts of Europe and Asia, these masked mammals are known as washing bears, thanks to their habit of dunking their food in water. Take a close look and compare. The family resemblances are strong.
Spend time watching bears and they will gradually reveal a fascinating array of natural behaviors. In general, bears are solitary creatures. Large animals, they require considerable amounts of food. Not having to share resources is a wise survival strategy. An obvious exception to this is seen with mother bears caring for cubs. As a group, they are not territorial animals. When home ranges overlap, they will tolerate another bear's presence. When bears are active, depends on the species. For example, with polar bears, when they are not on the prowl for food, they are resting. Day and night are terms that don't apply to these animals of the Arctic. Depending on the time of year, they are either in total light or complete darkness. In a 24-hour period, polar bears will sleep for seven to eight hour stretches with additional naps. Conserving energy for the next hunt is a top priority. If polar bears do encounter each other, the smaller of the two will usually back off and leave. In comparison, brown bears can be active at any time, but generally forage in the morning and evening, spending the greater part of the day resting. Seasonal changes in food supplies can be highly motivating. Brown bears are known to travel great distances to browse plentiful berry crops. Regions with salmon-rich streams are also on their internal radar. When food supplies are abundant, these bears become more social, coming together in large numbers, foraging in family groups. While brown bears can swim, they are terrestrial beings. As cubs, they are capable of climbing. Mature brown bears don't or probably can't climb due to their bulk. In contrast, American black bears of any age are excellent climbers. Mother bears often leave their cubs in the safety of babysitter trees while they forage below. Giant pandas are also at home up in the branches. Asian black bears have a habit of making nests high in trees squashing down branches to create a leafy platform to rest in. Sun bears also like to lounge around in leafy treetops. Bears living in cooler climates are often said to sleep through the winter to avoid extreme conditions and low food supplies. While this behavior is often called hibernation, this is a misconception. Instead, these animals slow down and enter what's known as a state of torpor. True hibernators drop their heart rates and body temperatures to match their environment. They will not rouse despite loud noises or if they're touched. In contrast, an animal in torpor has a slow heart rate, but their body temperature stays relatively high. And should the need arise, they can wake up quickly and easily. Bears in torpor survive by using fat reserves stored in their bodies during warmer months. While dormant like this, bears do not defecate 
their bodies recycle the waste materials. She bears in torpor can, however, give birth. Bears from hotter climates have no need for this type of behavior, as food supplies are plentiful year-round. While bears aren't territorial, they do wrestle. During these play fights, bears are actually communicating, telling each other who's in charge. Size helps, but a domineering attitude is what wins these debates. Growling adds to the show. Bears will fight for real if it's absolutely necessary, but the risk of injury is a good deterrent. Why get hurt when a domineering posture can subdue a rival? Smart behaviors like this give bears the edge they need to survive in the wild. Getting the chance to see a bear right from the start of its life is rare. As rare as this sun bear and her newborn. In captive breeding situations, baby sun bears arrive after a gestation period of three months. Being a vulnerable species, every cub is precious. Here's the same cub, a few weeks on. With plenty of care and attention, it's progressing well. So is another zoo born, a spectacled bear cub. After exploring down on the ground, this adventurous youngster is taking things to a new level. As a vulnerable species, many giant pandas are born as a result of captive breeding programs. Every effort is made to ensure these special babies have the best start in life. By the time they're four months old, panda cubs are able to run and climb. Young pandas start to chew on bamboo when they reach the six-month mark. Up in the Arctic, polar bear cubs don't emerge from their warm dens until they're roughly three months old. Fresh air and sunshine are new experiences for these fluffy cubs. Polar bear milk is rich, up to 36% fat. The average litter size is two, which means the cubs don't have much competition for food or attention. Brown bear cubs arrive in the winter she bears can have up to four in a litter. As newborns, these feisty brown bundles would have weighed half a kilo. Nursing on their mother's milk, the cubs grow quickly. By three months, they average 15 kilograms. Mother brown bears can produce milk for two and a half years. but her offspring do start to enjoy a more varied diet from five months onward. Mother bears alone raise their cubs. By watching her, they learn vital life skills, such as fishing. Patience is the key. Finally, Fresh salmon is on the menu.
Elsewhere, some other cubs are giving themselves an aquatic workout. Play fighting hones their hunting and defensive skills while strengthening growing bodies. Brown bear cubs usually stay with their mum until their third or fourth spring. By then, she's ready to raise another litter. Young brown bears can start breeding sometime between their fourth and sixth birthdays. They do, however, take a decade to become fully grown. If they survive their first few years, brown bears can live for 20 to 30 years in the wild. In the wilds of India, a mother sloth bear is enjoying some solitude while her cubs wrestle amongst the rocks. Sloth bear cubs start to explore the wider world when they're nine to 12 weeks of age. These shaggy mothers offer their babies an unusual form of transport. Sloth bears are the only bears that carry their young on their backs. Cubs cling on to an extra clump of back fur, known as a saddle. Baby sloth bears enjoy the free ride until they're six to nine months old. Cubs stay with their mother until their second or third birthday, learning how to survive in their habitat. Young she bears are able to start raising cubs of their own after they turn three but are often older. In the wild, sloth bears have a life expectancy of 20 to 30 years. Plenty of time to explore their fascinating part of the world. Every bear species has its own particular needs when it comes to habitat and diet. As marine mammals, polar bears depend on the ocean, in particular, the ice. They need it to hunt from. The edges of the pack ice or cracks along it are prime locations. Anywhere a seal might surface. Throughout the year, they migrate across the frozen landscape, following the moving ice. Polar bears have stamina they can travel more than 30 kilometers a day for several days. Diet-wise, polar bears are the only pure carnivores in the family. Their stomachs can hold about 70 kilos of meat. One seal can provide a mature bear with sufficient energy to last them eight days. Ringed seals are their main prey. Other seals, plus walruses, seabirds, fish, and carrion also make up their diet. For the moment, this bear has an entire whale carcass to itself. Sometimes a polar bear will only eat an animal's blubber. In their harsh environment, Fat has a higher value than meat, as it adds to their own insulating layer. After a hearty meal, polar bears will groom. Rubbing themselves on the ice is an easy way to clean their fur. These cubs have already mastered this valuable life skill. In contrast, brown bears have adapted to a wide range of environments. They can exist in open meadows, mountainous forests, even harsh tundra. 
When they require a den, they can dig one out using dry vegetation for bedding. Unlike their polar cousins, brown bears are omnivores, animals that eat meat and plant material. Using their claws, they can unearth fungi, roots and insects, plus small mammals from their burrows. As the seasons change, so does their diet. For example, summer is a time of berries, tubers, bulbs and salmon. Like many anglers, brown bears have favourite fishing spots. They will do what they can to reserve theirs to ensure others can't take advantage of it. It's all in the timing. From the end of the summer through to early autumn, brown bears dramatically increase their food intake. This binge eating is known as hyperphagia. Its purpose, to help the bear stack on plenty of fat reserves to see them through their dormant winter denning period. While all bears are classed as carnivores, giant pandas have gone against their nature. They are vegetarians. In the wild, they live in forests with stands of lush bamboo. Their leafy, fibrous diet is an odd choice. Having a digestive tract designed to break down meat makes bamboo a low-quality energy source. The majority of what they do eat passes through undigested which leaves them devoting roughly 14 hours a day to eating in order to gain what little benefit they can. 15 kilos of bamboo is the minimum daily requirement. These bears are fast eaters. They can peel and devour a bamboo shoot in approximately 40 seconds. When swallowing, giant pandas have an especially thick esophagus to protect them from splinters traveling down to their stomachs. Sun bears enjoy a varied diet, their keen sense of smell helping them locate ripe fruits and berries, plus insects, small birds, rodents and lizards. Their 10 centimeter long claws are handy tools for ripping into old logs to expose the protein-rich buffet hiding within. Sun bears have especially long tongues, perfect for accessing the contents of beehives. This habit earning these sweet tooths the nickname honey bear. As big animals, bears play an equally large role in their respective environments. In the Arctic, Polar bears are considered a keystone species, a creature connected to many others in their local food web. The leftovers from their meals feed other bears, arctic foxes and snowy owls. Polar bears keep seal populations in check, which in turn ensure salmon numbers remain at healthy levels. Brown bears also act as apex predators in their ecosystems, keeping balance in the food chain. When hunting, they weed out the sick and weak, ensuring the strongest and fittest survive, boosting the overall health of the animal community. Bears also scavenge, cleaning up carcasses that would otherwise spread disease and pollute a locality. With the majority of bear species being omnivores, these large mammals help with seed dispersal and promote new plant growth. An additional gardening duty is fertilization, bears making generous deposits during their travels. In a way, bears are like furry custodians, ensuring the health and well-being of their wild neighborhoods.
for countless generations, bears have been making an impact on the world. In the Northern Hemisphere, they are celebrated every evening, with stargazers picking out the constellations dedicated to these impressive mammals. Ursa Major, the Great Bear, and Ursa Minor, the Little Bear. Komodi, or spirit bears, are naturally eye-catching, but they hold special meaning to some Native American cultures who believe these rare creatures have supernatural powers. Depictions of bears often feature on traditional totem poles, symbolizing hard work, strength, and great love. Culturally, bears were regarded as teachers. It is believed they taught people to collect berries and catch salmon. Finland and Russia hold brown bears in such high regard they are their national animals, symbols of pride and power. In America, the mighty grizzly bear roams the flag of California, where it is also the state animal. In Western popular culture, bears have long been cherished, the beloved stars of countless fairy tales and children's books. While the real thing can be fearsome, the toy versions of these mammals are soft, cuddly and friendly, bringing a sense of calm and contentment with them. Bears are so adored, some are national treasures, like the giant panda in China. Their striking black and white fur is seen as a natural version of the famous yin-yang symbol. It is believed the gentle nature of pandas is proof how two opposing forces can bring peace and harmony when in balance. In line with this belief, giant pandas themselves are symbols of peace. These distinctive creatures are also popular icons of wildlife conservation groups. Every aspect of pandas is special, even their waste. Their bamboo-rich deposits have been recycled into useful paper products. In recent times, Chinese New Year was extra festive, thanks to the arrival of 17 giant panda cubs each precious baby an adorable sign of hope. Not only for pandas, but the entire bear family. In times past, there were hundreds of bear species. Of the eight that remain today, only two are considered healthy and viable as a population. One of those is the brown bear. Around the globe, their population is estimated to be above 200,000, Russia hosting half of them. American black bears are the other healthy population. Experts believe there are between 850 and 950,000 of them remaining in the wild. The rest of the bear family are classed as vulnerable. Bears face a range of survival challenges, hunting and poaching, loss of habitat to agriculture and logging, and changes in weather patterns. Over the past 50 years, there has been a major decline in sea ice, directly impacting polar bears and their ability to hunt. Some bear species are still targeted for their bile and various body parts for use in traditional cures, despite the fact they have no proven medicinal benefit. Hopefully, awareness campaigns and protection laws will put an end to these cruel, dated practices. Zoos and sanctuaries play vital roles in bear preservation. They make these majestic animals accessible and heighten public awareness about their plights. Cubs are especially effective ambassadors for their relatives in the wild. Giant pandas are living proof that conservation programs work. At one stage, giant pandas were endangered, but dedication and hard work have brought them back from the brink. In the late 70s, there were a thousand left in the wild. By 2014, those numbers had risen to 1,864, a small but significant rise. 
As of 2016, they were upgraded to vulnerable status. Their ongoing success hinges on the continuation of conservation efforts, not only on a local scale, but globally. And not just for giant pandas, but for the future survival of all bears. <laughs>